Good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? Fine, fine. And you? Very good. Okay. So uh, we are going to wait a little longer for the other participants, but um, we are going to start with the session uh, because we have just one hour to complete. Um, the topics that we are going to develop in this session. We are in session number three, and we have, or we are going to have um, one more session uh, to complete the second week. So that's uh, the middle of the course. So we are going to have just two more weeks to complete the course. So. Yesterday, we were talking about the participle adjective um, in which we were saying that depending on the ending of the word, uh, it has like a different meaning. We are going to have just a review of the uh, participle adjectives because um, we are going to have the exercise. I know that I said that I, I was like, going to write the exercises on the document, but I, I was really, really busy, so I couldn't, do, um, I couldn't write the, uh, the exercise on the document. So we are going to solve the sentences in the session. So don't worry for that because it was like, I, I have some situations though. So. Um, that's why I don't have the exercises on the document, but we are going to have the sentence and we are going to decide what is the best option for that, um, for that sentence. So we have two endings. We have the ing and we have the ed. Remember that we were talking about that, um, that word, that adjective, in which is saying that the uh, verb, or in this case, the adjective that N in ING, are those that make us feel something. So in that case, it's to talk about the, the person and the thing or the situation which caused the feeling. We have here the uh, specification for that. So in that case, when you see a situation made by a person or a thing or an animal to know that we are going to use the ing form of that adjective. But if we are talking about feelings, we are going to use the ed on that adjective. So in that case, we know that when we have ing, is the personal situation which is causing some feeling. And we are, when we are using ED because of the feeling. Um, acuérdense que tenemos el pasado participio. Aquellos adjetivos que terminen en ED, como lo veíamos en nuestra lista, Son los sentimientos. In this case, we are talking about this, this side of the table. Son los sentimientos. Son cómo nos sentimos nosotros, ¿verdad? Van a terminar con ED. Pero cuando eh, estamos hablando de quién causa esos sentimientos, y quién los causa, ya sea un animal, una situación o una persona, utilizamos el adjetivo con el IN. Entonces, cuando estamos hablando de una situación, por ejemplo, estresante, we're not going to say that a situation is stressed, because the situation is not feeling that. We are feeling stressed, but the situation is stressing. So in that case, it's different. So we are going to see the exercises because 
we are going to continue with that part. And then we are going to see another topic related to adjectives. So we have the exercise. Choose the correct adjective. We have number one. And you're going to see the, the sentence and you're going to say, mm, that's pretty easy. That's the point. So we have number one. My nephew was And we have two options. We have a muse with ED, or we have a muffin with ING by the crown. We're going to answer uh, the sentences like this. We're going to um, say the answer, and then we're going to see the other uh, sentence. So in this case, my nephew was. What is the correct uh, option? Number one or number two? Amuse? Amusing. Amusing. Number one or number two? Number two. Number two. Mm, let's see. Let's analyze the situation. My, new, my nephew is feeling something. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, he's amused. Uh huh. He's amused in this case. That is the correct answer. Cuando se trate de sentimientos, vamos a utilizar el adjetivo que lleve e de al final. Cuando es una situación la que causa que las personas sientan algo. Vamos a utilizar el ING. En este caso es un sentimiento el que él estaba sintiendo, ¿verdad? Valga la redundancia, pero es así como funciona. Number two. It's so. And we have two options. Frustrated. Or frustrating. No matter how much I study, teacher, I'm sorry, no. I can't see that document. You can see it when you. Oh. Okay, I don't know what is happening. You're not telling me. I suppose I right share now. this thing, but yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, I can see. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we have numbers two. Uh, no matter how much I study, I can seem to remember this vocabulary. So we have the situation. It is so frustrated or it is so frustrating. Frustrating. Good, frustrating because we are talking about a situation. It's so frustrating. And no matter how much I study, I can seem to remember this vocabulary. So in that case, I don't know why it's not marking as the color. It doesn't want to work. Another color? Okay. Number three. This lesson is so. And we have two options. Born or boring. This lesson is so. Bored or boring? Boring. Good, boring. Because the lesson is not feeling anything. We are feeling bored, but the lesson is boring. Number four. 
I am. I'm feeling, and we have two options, depressed or depressing. Depressed. Depressed, good. I'm feeling depressed. In this case, I'm talking about me, the things that I am feeling. Why I'm feeling depressed? I'm going to go home because I'm feeling depressed. I'm going, I'm going to go home eat some chocolate and go to bed early with a good book. Five, I thought her idea was absolutely and we have two options. Fascinated or fascinating. Her idea was absolutely fascinated or fascinating. 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 Good, Good. fascinating. Because we are talking about an idea and even as the document is giving us some clues. So that's good. Then we have number six. Number six. This math problem this math problem is so Yes, I know that we have a different kind of reading parts. So, and we have two options, confused or confusing. This math problem is a confused or confusing. 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 That's good, confusing. Uh, can you help me? Can you help me? Because we are talking about a situation, because we are having problems with math. So in that case, it's confusing. Number seven, the teacher was really, amused or amusing? So the wait, wait, wait. So the lesson passed quickly. Mm -hmm. Amusing. Good, amusing. Because it is not talking about the teacher. It's, it's, Telling something about the situation that it was happening. So in that case, the class or the lesson passed quickly. Good. Number eight, the journey was and we have exhausted or exhausting. The journey was exhausted or exhausting. Exhausted. Exhausted. The journey. Exhausting. Exhausting. In that case, because it's like something that we did. So the journey was exhausting. Twelve hours by bus. Twelve hours by bus. Nine, the plane began to move in a rather, the plane began to move in a rather alarmed or alarming, alarmed or alarming.
the plane begin to move in a rather alarm or alarming? Alarming. Alarming. Alarming way. Number 10, he was frightened or frightening when he saw the spider. He was a uh, good. When he saw when he saw the spider. Thus, in this case, he's feeling something. And in this case, I'm not marking this one. And this one. Two more. Um, Sentence. I was really, I was really, we have two options, embarrassed or embarrassing. I was, what? The first one. The first one, embarrassed would. Because I'm talking about my feelings. Good. When I fell over in the street. When I fell over in the street. And the last one. That film was so. That film was so. Depressed or depressing? Depressing. Depressing, because we are talking about the movie. Depressing. There was no happy. There was no happy ending for any of the characters. Okay, so we have 12 uh, sentences in which we are using the uh, participle adjective in which we are going to say that uh, we are talking about feelings and uh, the things that make uh, us feel something. And we have different expression. In some cases, we are saying this lesson, this movie, um, the plane, and in that case, we know that we are talking about a situation or a thing that makes us feel something. But when we are using uh, the pronouns and the word feelings, we know that we are talking about something that we feel. And in that case, we know that we are going to use the correct uh, participle or adjective. So in that case, that's the ending for that topic. So. Now, we are going to talk about um, adjectives also, but in this case, we are going to see different ways in which we can call this same adjective. So in this case, we are going to talk about synonyms. We are going to talk about synonyms. Después de haber visto eh, los, um, los participal adjectives, vamos a seguir hablando de los adjetivos. Pero en este caso, vamos a hablar de sinónimos. We know that we have a long uh, list of adjectives. Uh, but in this case, we are going to know in which uh, ways we can call the same adjective. Vamos a ver cómo podemos llamar a los adjetivos, porque tienen muchas eh, maneras de llamarlos, that are the same. The same meaning, but with a different name or 
structure. So in that case, we are going to see the adjective synonym. So let me say to this new topic. Adjective synonym. We are going to create a list of adjectives uh, with a different um, words that we can use for the same purpose. And then we are going to see a long list. In this case, we are going to use the more common adjective with different uh, names. And then we are going to have another list. We are going to have like two lists for the adjective synonym. So it says, uh, we have a phrase at the beginning and it says, the more words you know, the more clearly and powerfully you will think. And the more ideas you will invite into your mind. That is a phrase of Wilfred Funk. So in the case is saying that we need to have a lot of words in our mind because knowing a lot of words, creating vocabularies, we are going to have more ideas in our minds. Obviously, in this process, we are going to have something to make conversation. So in that case, it's very important that we create vocabulary. So we are going to have something like that. So first thing, what is a synonym? It says that uh, we have like a specific meaning and it says a word or phrase that has the same or nearly the same meaning as another word or phrase. So in this case, we're saying that we are going to see different words that have the same meaning or a slightly same meaning uh, with the principal word. We know that in English, we have a lot of words that has the same meaning, but changing depending on the context or something like that. But in this case, we're going to see different words that we can use for the same purpose. In this case, we're going to see um, some uh, words, some adjectives. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to see six, that is the first part, six adjectives with uh, different names or different words. And then we are going to see another list of adjectives with this word. So we are going to begin with the first adjective that is the word happy. 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 That is the word that we are going to develop right now. So in that case, we are going to create like a list of words that we can use for that word. Happy is the base. So we have cheerful. Cheerful, happy and positive in feeling or attitude. This word is also used to describe a thing or place that is bright and pleasant. So the first word that we have for happy is cheerful. Cheerful is one of the synonyms of happy. Then we have delighted. That means very pleased, feeling or showing 
great pleasure. Ecstatic. It says that extremely happy or excited, expressing overwhelming happiness or joyful excitement. When we have contented, that means feeling or showing satisfaction with one's possession, status, or situation. In that case, we are feeling good in the way we are in this moment. Then amused, that means finding something funny or entertaining that is the meaning of a news finding something funny or entertaining real suddenly become extremely happy about something suddenly become extremely happy about something we can call it like excitement, something like that. Then we have elated. And it means in high spirit, excited or proud, often because something has happened or been achieved. And I'm going to write the meaning of this one because it is not very common to hear that word, right? So I'm going to write the meaning of this one. That is the meaning of elated. And I said, excited or proud, often because something has happened or been achieved. Then we have another one that is on cloud nine. On cloud nine. It's like we are going to say, like, if we are going to translate this one, en la nube nueve. That is something very different. So it says, being in a state of euphoric happiness because something very good has happened to you. It's like on the ground. Es estar como en las nubes de la emoción. And also, I'm going to write uh, the uh, meaning of this kind of um, a statement. So we have the meaning there. Then we have the in seventh heaven, starting el septimo cielo. It means very happy, excited. be walking or floating on air. That is very common in Spanish also. Estar caminando, ¿verdad? En el aire. Estar eh, flotando, ¿verdad? When we are very, very happy or excited or something like that.
and it says a, a state of extreme happiness. And this piece is not necessary to write the, the, um, the meaning because it's kind of easy to understand what is the meaning of this one. Then it says, please, please. And in this case, I had a feeling of showing a pleasure and satisfaction, especially at an event or a situation. You can use, I'm pleased to meet you as a polite way of greeting someone when you meet a person for the first time. So it says that we can use this word in a phrase that is a very, very common phrase that we use when we are uh, knowing each other. And it says, feeling or showing pleasure and satisfaction, especially at an event or a situation. And we are going to use the phrase, I'm pleased to meet you. A supply way of greeting someone when you meet a person for the first time. In this case, it's not like we are going to use this place for all the people that we are knowing, because in some cases we know that person um, previously. So this is just for the very first time when we meet someone. It's kind of function better in that way. Now we are going to change from happy to sad. We are going to change our feelings we were feeling very happy and now we are going to feel kind of sad because we are going to talk about the word sad and the um, the synonyms that have we have for that word. Tell me. I have a question. Tell For me. static, what is the meaning in Spanish? Static. The number three. Yeah. Yeah. In the other way we are saying, it's when we are extremely happy or extremely Excited, expressing overwhelming happiness or joyful excitement. We are like very, very, very happy, very excited for something. I'm going to play the, the meaning uh, for that one too. It is extremely happy or excited. Yeah, because I, I look uh, at Google and, and say statica, and that's, uh, that's not. Ah, that is another meaning for that word, because you know that we can uh, search the words on the dictionary or something like that, and we are going to have different meanings from a noun, from an adverb, from an adjective, so in that case, it is not like hmm. just one, one uh, meaning. And in this case, it's extremely happy or excited. Hmm. You're welcome. So now, we are going to talk about sun something sad. So we are going to say synonyms of sad or for sad. Sad. And again, we are going to have our list of words related to the word sad or the feeling sad. We have miserable. That is the first one. And it says, miserable of a person, very unhappy, unpleasant, or uncomfortable, causing much unhappiness or discomfort. It's someone that is feeling very, very bad, that is not like happy with the life they are having. Um, and they tell me. <laughs> Someone that wants to die. That's kind of bad to feel like that. So in that case, it's not a really good feeling. Es una persona, verdad, que se siente inconforme, que nada le gusta, que siente que siempre está triste y que hace que otras personas se sientan incómodas. That, that's the meaning of miserable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have another one that is depressed. Depressed. That is another word that is related to the word sad. And in the case, obviously, we are talking about a person that has low in his spirit, feeling unhappy and without hope, suffering from 
clinical depression. That is something very, very um, bad because in that case, it's something that we need to talk about with a professional when we are having this clinical depression. Then we have sorrowful. Sorrow. Sorrowful means very sad, full of sorrow, hurt, broken, feeling or showing grief. Something or someone that is feeling like a um, very sad, uh, has a hair broken or something like that, is full of sorrow. Or sufrimiento, lleno de sufrimiento, lo podemos decir en español. Then we have frustrated. Frustrated, feeling annoyed, uh, disappointed, or discouraged, especially because you cannot achieve what you want. Um, in this case, we are going to use this word before a noun, and it means having an ambition that has not been realized. Estamos frustrados. Este es el significado. Frustrated, frustrados. Then we have this this trout. This trout. And we are going to write the meaning. Extremely upset. Extremely upset. Worry or nervous. Then we have gloomy. That it says having or showing a lack of hope. Having or showing a lack of hope. Not expecting or believing anything good in a situation. Then we have this one that is despondent. That is another kind of a, a strange word that we are adding to our vocabulary. And it says, in low spirit, from loss of hope or courage, because you think that you are in a situation that is unlikely to improve. En ese caso es como no tener esperanza, ¿verdad? Alguien sin esperanza que ha perdido, ¿verdad? El coraje. Porque piensa que está en una situación que no va a mejorar. En low spirit, from lost of hope. Courage. Because you think that you are in a situation that is unlikely to improve. Then we have a distress. That is mean, upset or worried, suffering from pain or anxiety. And we have the last one that is devastating. And it means emotionally shattered, very shocked and upset.
So we are going to end with the sadness. We are going to have sad uh, in that place. And we're going to talk about good. We are going to talk about the word good and some synonyms for the word good. Good. And we have our list again. I need to start. So we have excellence. We know that excellence is extremely good. Then we have sensational. That means very exciting and unusual, unexpected, um, excellent, or impressive. Then we have amazing. That means very good, impressive, extremely surprising, awesome, awesome, very good, causing feelings of great admiration or respect. Marvelous. And this one means extremely good, extraordinary, causing a great wonder of the highest kind of quality. Then we have terrific, and this case is not like talking about terrible or something like that. Terrific has a good connotation. And it means very good or enjoyable. Ese terrific, eh, podríamos nosotros interpretarlo a veces solo verlo y decir, ah, significa algo terrible, terrorífico, pero en este caso, Eh, significa algo bastante bueno y que es muy disfrutable. So in that case, it's a good connotation for the word terrific. It is not like something uh, bad or something like that. Splendid. Splendid. That is very impressive, excellent, or beautiful. Outstanding. Outstanding. And this means exceptionally good, very much better than usual. Then we have exceptional. And it means you know so good, better than average, much greater than usual, especially in skills, intelligence, and quality. And then we have legendary. Legendary. That means remarkable enough to be famous. Remarkable, remarkable enough to be famous. 
in that case is something really really good and then we have the other um uh, word that is bad we have good and now we are going to talk about bad And then we have the first one, and that is awful. That means very bad, unpleasant, or low quality. Very bad, unpleasant, or low quality. Then we have poor, that means of a very low quality of a standard. Unpleasant. Unpleasant, not attractive, enjoyable or pleasant, causing discomfort of a person or their manner unfriendly and rude. Then we have mean. Now this word means unkind or unpleasant, especially of a place, poor in quality and appearance. Then we have dreadful. This word means extremely bad. Causing great suffering or fear of a person and a will or travel. Then we have nasty. That means mean, unpleasant, mischievous, or offensive. Then we have wicked. That means morally wrong. Morally wrong and bad. Wicked can also mean a slightly bad, but in an attractive way. Then we have despicable. That means unpleasant, unattractive, unfriendly. And the last one for bad is virtue. That means extremely or deplorably bad or disgusting of poor quality, being in a very unhappy or unfortunate state.
so we have two more adjectives um, in this list. So I guess we are going to end with those two uh, adjectives. And then uh, tomorrow we are going to see the other words that we have in the other list that we are going to create for this topic. So in this case, we are going to talk about pretty and angry. That are the words that we are going to use for the list number one. So we are going to use pretty. And we have this word. We have nice. That is something pleasant or attractive of a person that is good natured or kind. Then we have a stunning. That means extremely beautiful or attractive. When we say someone is a stunning, it's because they are very, very um, attractive or handsome or beautiful. Then we have the word beautiful. That means very attractive, having an attractive quality that gives pleasure to those who see it or think about it. Then we have handsome because in some cases, um, it's said that beautiful is used for women and handsome is used for uh, men. So in that case, it's usually used on men. And it means physical attractive or good looking. Then we have dazzling. Dazzling, that means extremely attractive. Beautiful or skillful. Then we have appealing. That means interesting and attractive. Out of this word. Fuera de este mundo. Es una, una frase bastante común. Out of this world. Extremely enjoyable or impressive. Gorgeous. That means very beautiful, pleasant, or magnificent. And then we have charming. That means very pleasant or delightful of a person of their manner, very polite, friendly, and likable. That is someone very, very good that it has that, that kind of feeling when you are talking with that kind of person. And then we have the last adjective that is angry. Angry and we have annoying. That means feeling or showing angry irritation. Then grumpy. That means being in an angry mood because you are annoyed at something or are feeling tired. Grumpy in Spanish is like a uh, gruñón. Cuando alguien está molesto por una situación, está haciendo gruñón o gruñona. Then we have the rage. That means extremely angry. Enrage means very angry or furious. So 
coaching means easily anger or upset over sensitive. Man, that means very angry or annoyed. And then we have enraged. That means furiously angry. So we have in this case some common uh, adjectives that we use in every conversation like happy, uh, sad, good, bad, pretty, um, and also we are using angry. So we have like um, these big groups of words that we use that are very, very common. And also if we want to have like a, an improvement in the way we are talking with other people and using this kind of words, we can use also all of this word that we have in the list, because in that case, we are going to make um, the conversation more interesting because we are adding a new words and um, that has almost the same um, meaning. In some cases, it's kind of uh, hard or like very, very deep. The, the difference, but we can use it in, in because it's not like we are going to say, ah, oh, he is bad in, in, in a bad situation, in bad, in bad, in bad, in bad again. No, in some cases we need to change that to gain the attention of the listener or the person that is talking with us. So um, we have just the first list of the synonyms of the words or the adjectives. And tomorrow we are going to see uh, other examples of these words that we can use in this part of the adjectives that we already know. So we are going to create more vocabulary to help you to improve your English skill when you are talking with someone. And then we are going to have the last session tomorrow of this week. And we are going to have a vocabulary and the other topic that we are going to develop for um, the number four or the session number four. So we are going to um, end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session of week number two. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in session number four of this week number two. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night.